Vijay Tendulkar, silence the court is in session. The topic for discussion today is Vijay Tendulkar, silence the court is in session, the formal and the contextual structure. So I shall be trying today to relate the form that has been used by Vijay Tendulkar in this play with the content. By form, I mean the artificial format of a theater. Whenever a playwright is writing a play, the playwright has in mind the conventions of the theater that are popular, that are suitable. Any act of writing for the theater must take into account two forms. One is the written form when you are writing a theater text. The second is the materials that are required for the performance of the written text. Mikhail Bakhtin says that word is converted into flesh in case of theater. Okay. Raymond Williams, of course, says that drama in a dramatized society, our society is so dramatized nowadays, any act that is performed in society, in social sphere is actually a scripted act. So drama in a dramatized society is very difficult nowadays. So drama, according to Plato, is thrice removed from reality. It is a copy of a copy of a copy. Even Aristotle says that drama is an imitation of an action a representation of an action. And when you represent an action that is scripted for performance, you have a different type of literature. So there is again a debate whether drama at all should be regarded as a, as a literary work or should be regarded as a performance text. Drama is a literary work because the literature is there, the writing is there, the script is there. It is a performative text because performance is also done. That makes the written text visible to the audience. So when we read any kind of play, we must take into account the performance of the play. So we should, by reading the play, try to visualize what the play is. Similarly, a writer is also very conscious when he is writing the play because the play is written for the theater. So it is a product of the theater, by the theater, for the theater. Theater is defined as whatever happens in a particular space in front of an audience representing a story. So Aristotle also defined theater as an imitation of an action. In case of tragedy, serious action. In case of comedy, ludicrous action. So it has a form. Indian theater tradition post-independence had three major forms of development. And three major forms identified by Badal Sarkar. He refers to the first theater that is folkloric, the second theater that is Western, the third theater that is alternative theater, beyond the proscenium theater, outside the theater houses. So here we have the threefold classification of theater. Of these threefold classification, the second type of theater has been used by Vijay Tendulkar in the play, Silence the Court is in Session. So in the second form of theater, that is Western theater, a theater of importation that uses a proscenium stage for performance, we have further classifications. So on this stage, different types of stories can be presented in different ways. So theater uses the representational modes very consciously. We can classify this theater, the proscenium theater, the second theater, into three mode types as per the Indian theatrical tradition. Number one, as Robert Brustein has stated in the theater of revolt, number one, as a theater of messianic revolt. So this type of theater is usually a play that produces a kind of story that has hero or central character around which, around whom the central character, around the central character, the entire story revolves. Usually this story is revolving around a Mishiha type hero, okay, or heroine, one who introduces some kind of bright idea and tries to pursue that bright idea throughout. And if that bright idea is followed by the society, accepted by the society, it becomes comedy. If that is revolted by society and there are protests 
and that individual is left isolated alone, the story turns into tragedy. In Europe also this type of drama developed in the hands of Bernard Shaw. Bernard Shaw's plays are usually classified into, into two types, plays pleasant, plays unpleasant. But Bernard Shaw was also a playwright who wrote for a scientific age, for a modern age and composed dialectical plays, say Man and Superman. We have the dialectics, Major Barbara, Arms and the Man, Mrs. Warren's Profession. These are the major plays of Bernard Shaw. Some of these plays are serious, very serious, tragic. Some of these plays are non-serious, comic, intelligent, full of ideas. So these drama of ideas that were introduced by Bernard Shaw as well as Henrik Ibsen, Norwegian playwright, usually contains a protagonist who introduces an idea and tries to drag on that idea from the beginning to the end. Robert Brustin says that this is a theater of messianic revolt, theater of Mashiach like character and his revolt or her revolt. Nora Helmer at the end of Henry Gibson's play, A Doll's House, clamps the door against the dominant patriarchy. So here we have a dominant character, Nora Helmer, protesting against the patriarchal society. In Enemy of the People, we have Dr. Stockman, who also has some ideas, scientific ideas that he carries from the beginning to the end. Although at the end of the play that Dr. Stockman is isolated, we have the words of the ideas, the ideologies of Dr. Stockman imprinted on the mind of the audience. So the structure of the play is naturalistic play. And the content is drama of idea, where the ideas revolve around the central protagonist. Even in the place where we have this individual set against society. I remember John Goldsworthy's play, Justice, where we have the central character named William Folder. William Folder has forged a check in order to help a widow, the widow is very poor, after forging a check, he gets some money and helps this widow. When he is caught, he is sentenced, imprisoned. When he comes out from the prison, he loses his job, he is not reconciled. So William Folder is not given justice. His crime is taken into account. No one takes into account what led him to the crime. So it challenges the contemporary legal system of English society. After the production of the play, of course, the legal system has changed. Now crime is also related to the reasons behind the crime. But before that, any kind of evidence that proves that person has committed a crime the accused has committed a crime, led to conviction. So here William Folder in a statement says that the society is like a spider's web and we human beings are caught in the web. If we cut the web here, the web will grow there and we are left as poor fighters in society. So this type of messianic characters are present in Indian plays. We find several characters. So after the independence, this became a tendency. India nation was trying to build itself. New ideas were coming, progressive ideas. And this was set against the orthodoxical ideas that were prevalent during that time. And drama of messianic revolt developed in Indian context. The second type of drama that we can call the drama or theater of, of existential revolt where the individual is an ordinary person who is trapped by society, trapped in society because of the conservative rules of society. And this person struggles very hard against the society and yet he cannot overcome. He is trapped in an existential crisis. 
so that Mishia like hero is missing in such play. In case of say Bado Sharkas Evong Indrujit, we have the character of Indrujit at the center. So there the revolt of Indrujit, Ebong Indrujit and Indrujit. So we have the existential revolt, a revolt against the absurdities of life that are there. But again the revolt does not turn into a progressive one in case of theatre of existential revolt. This has been influenced by the works mainly of the playwrights of the absurd. We have the theatre of the absurd as a very dominant form of theatre in the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s in Europe and America. And just after the independence, Indian playwrights were influenced by the works of Samuel Beckett. You must have heard the name of Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, where we have the presence of two persons, Vladimir and Estragon, who want to escape from the sufferings of life and they keep on waiting for Godot. They think that Godot will one day come and solve their problems. So two false comings of Godot can be seen. Instead of Godot, Lucky and Pozo come. They come and go, come and go twice in the play, but nothing happens. No one comes, no one goes. They are still there. The trams are there and the life does not change at all. So this kind of existential trapping of man in a hostile surrounding and the realization of absurdity of life. So this absurdity is related to the existential crisis of man. This was presented in the works of Albert Camus, in the works of Sarthe, in the works of Harold Pinter, you have read the birthday party. The birthday party of Harold Pinter presents the entrapment of Stanley Weber. So he takes refuge in the seaside resort of Meg and Pete. And two emissaries from the outer world come and drag Stanley away. So Stanley cannot change the course of his life. So he is a recluse, an artist who takes refuge to escape from something, but society drags him and takes him again, giving him a rebirth. And in this rebirth, we find the death of Stanley, not the physical death, but the spiritual death of Stanley. So when you are standing under a shade, in the shade of a tree, thinking that this summer heat, the summer noon, that will be shaded with the tree, there is a crow at the top of your head and that crow is putting its blessings on your head. That is the state of man. In myth of Sisyphus, Albert Camus talked about this existentialism. So Sisyphus is asked to roll the rock uphill. Every day he used to push the rock uphill. But by the time he has completed his task and balanced the rock on the hilltop, the rock is pushed down. That is a kind of punishment that is given to Sisyphus. And Albert Camus says in Myth of Sisyphus that this is a man who is stuck with the absurd, the absurd man. Life is a habit. Human life, existence is a habit, the most deadening of all, according to Albert Camus. So this type of play that records the existential crisis of man is also a part of Indian dramatic tradition. So we have several Indian plays working on this theme of the entrapment of man in society where human beings are shown as helpless, existentially trapped human beings struggling against the adversities of life. So these are of course tragic plays. The third type of play is the play of revolt, revolt or theater of protest and revolt. And most of the plays written by the progressive writers, especially writers like Badal Sarkar, Girish Kannad, Vijay Tendulkar, belong to this third category, drama of or theater of revolt and protest. There we have, in a dialectical manner, 
the problems of society, contemporary society, the thesis and antithesis both are brought together on the stage and through a conflict between the life as it was or as it is and life that can be. Through the conflict between these two, we have the, the message that is generated from the play. While the drama of messianic revolt is propagandist, makes it very clear which idea is the correct one. In the second drama, there is no solution. Everyone is trapped and the solutions that are suggested are absurd. In drama of social revolt, drama of social protest, we have a kind of synthesis that is depending on the audience. It is a dialectical form of theater much influenced by the epic theater of Bertolt Brecht. So many playwrights of India, especially playwrights like Badal Shorkar, Vijay Tendulkar, Girish Karnar, they have been influenced by the plays of Bertolt Brecht, epic theater. And therefore, they create scientific, rational, dialectical theater without propagand propagating any kind of particular ideas, rather keeping the debate like structure, the dialectical structure for the audience. So, I would like to say that Vijay Tendulkar silence the court is in session, as Vijay Tendulkar himself has told, is an old fashioned play. Okay, I must confess that yes, Vijay Tendulkar silence the court is in session, is an old fashioned play. It is an old fashioned play because number one, it is a well made play. Number two, it is a naturalistic play. Okay, everything that happens on the stage resembles what has happened in the story. Okay, there is no difference. So, it is a naturalistic play. Number three, it uses the conventional devices. Conventional devices appears to be a meta theater, but remains a realistic play. Number four, the play uses the psychology of characters okay, as important aspect of the play. The mind of the character is gradually exposed, revealed through the act, through their action, through their interaction in the play. So, although I consider this as a well-made play, as a naturalistic play, as a realistic play that represents the social crisis as it is, still I say that this is in the context of 1968, a new type of play. So, new historicist reading of the play will make me think of the play as path breaking in the context of 1968. In the context of 2020, I can say that this is an old fashioned play that is related to the conventional old worn out traditions, formal aspects of the western theater. So, it is not an innovative theater, but keeping in mind the context of 1967-68 when the play was produced, I must say that during that time the play was path breaking. So, what are the areas? Number one, it uses the improvisational play technique, improvisational play technique that became very popular in the west, okay, but was not used much in the Indian theater tradition. Therefore, it is innovative. So, when Tendulkar is writing this play, he is thinking of something new for the stage. And he draws heavily from the European experiments with improvisational play. By improvisational play, I mean the works of Luigi Pirandello. Luigi Pirandello, he composed first a play called Six Characters in Search of an Author. Six Characters in Search of an Author. When the curtain opens, we find some characters searching for the author, asking for explanation why the author has not included them in their play, in his play. So, six characters are engaged in this improvisational, metatheatrical form of performance by asking question regarding the playwriting process. So, that improvisational metatheatrical tradition 
was also known to the Europeans. Before Luigi Pirandello, we have a tradition of play within a play, insert play tradition. So we have early examples like the Spanish tragedy, where there is an insert play. We also have examples in Shakespeare, for example, Hamlet or The Tempest or A Midsummer Night's Dream that contain insert play. That means play within a play. We also have this tradition used by John Webster in a play like The White Devil or even in Duchess of Malfi where there is the magical display of the waxen effigies of dead children in front of Duchess of Malfi. So that tradition talks about a kind of story that is kept within a story. So it is like a Chinese box or Japanese box. So when you open a box, you find another box inside. When you open that box, you find another box inside. So you keep on opening the boxes, you find boxes inside boxes inside boxes. So a play can also be composed keeping in mind this type of form where we have a play within a play within a play. So in the context of 1967-68 in Indian theatrical tradition, this type of experiment was not done. So we can say that Vijay Tendulkar, Silence the Court is in session, introduces meta theatricality and improvisational play structure in this drama. So this, of course, is presented in a well-made structure, in a realistic manner, well scripted, okay, with a beginning, a middle and an end, in a realistic format and with a desired cathartic effect from the mind of the audience. By cathartic effect, I talk about Aristotle's classification of the play. As because silence the court is in session can be regarded as a tragedy, tragedy of the Aristotelian form. I regard this as an old fashioned play, a well made, well structured play with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And through this, we have the journey of a character, central character, Lila Banare, who starts in a state of happiness and ends in a state of misery, who begins in a state of ignorance and gains enlightenment at the end. A character, according to Aristotle, passes through a complex plot. A complex plot contains first the relative state of happiness, cosmic happiness of the character. The character is in a state of a bliss. So we have Lila Banare at the beginning of the play in the state of bliss. Then the character will be committing hamartia. Hamartia refers to error. And because of this error, there will be a reversal of fortune. Every will, everything will turn upside down or in a reverse manner. What was intended turns out just the opposite. So way taken and way not taken. The way taken decided by the, by the hero to be the best one turns out to be the worst one. So here with this reversal of fortune or peripetaya, the tragic hero finally reaches a state of recognition where he recognizes that the way taken was not the right way. The way not taken was perhaps the right way. So through this state of anagnorisis or recognition, the tragic hero finally reaches the final stage of downfall or dinoma or catastrophe. And that ends with the suffering of the tragic hero. But this state of suffering is also a state of knowledge where insight and enlightenment allows the character to know about self and society. At the end of this play, we have Lila Banare suffering and suffering with this insight about the nature of human beings. So there are vultures all around, predatory vultures crying for life. And a person is of course, a public person who has been trolled, who has been followed, pursued by the predators of patriarchal society. She realizes this truth. Everything is exposed. Her private life doesn't remain her own. It becomes, becomes a case in the public sphere, a case that is investigated. 
Therefore, I regard this as an old-fashioned play, Aristotelian play. Yet, I say that this play in the context of 1968-67 is path-breaking because the storyline, however well constructed, is presented through a form that is improvisational. By improvisational, I just now referred to Luigi Pirandolo, who also wrote a work called Tonight We Improvise. Tonight we improvise. So that is a kind of improvisational play where we have characters improvising upon action in order to create a play in full view of the audience. Lionel Abel in the book called Meta Theatre talks about Meta Theatre as a form of performance. Meta Theatre looks at theatre as a conscious artifice, self conscious reflexive way of looking at theatre. This began with Shakespeare's Hamlet. Remember Shakespeare's Hamlet said, the play is a thing that will catch the conscience of the king. Hamlet has returned to Denmark and has seen his mother married to his uncle. His father is just dead one month ago and his uncle has become the king. His uncle has married Hamlet's mother, Gertrude. The ghost comes, Hamlet's father's ghost comes and informs Hamlet that his father was murdered by the uncle with support of the queen whom the uncle has now married. Hamlet has been informed by a ghost, not in the public field, but privately. Hamlet wants to convert this private knowledge about the murder of his father, about the usurpation of the throne by the betrayal, about the betrayal of his mother. This information has come to him from his father's ghost. So it is a private story that has been narrated, not in the public sphere, but privately to Hamlet. Hamlet wants to convert this story into a public story. If it is converted into a public story, if he has got evidence regarding the crime, he can easily reclaim his power and authority after executing the task of revenge. The father's ghost has asked him to avenge the death. So Hamlet must avenge the death. But he needs concrete proof that the uncle has killed his father and the mother has betrayed and therefore married the uncle. For that, he plans to organize a play in front of Claudius and Gertrude. So he says that the play is a thing that will catch the conscience of the king. According to Lionel Abel, this is an early example of meta theater. Okay, early example of meta theater where we have a play within a play that is consciously used in order to catch the audience response, in order to comment on the purpose of theater. So, what is the purpose of theater? Theatre's primary purpose, according to Aristotle, is imitation. What is the function of imitation? Imitation has twofold function. One is to teach, the second is to delight, didactic function of theatre. So these two functions of theatre are performed in Aristotelian form of theatre. This is also performed in this form of theatre, meta theatre where the didactic nature of theater is explored or exposed in full view of the audience. So in the inset play, the audience is also inset. So audience can see Claudius and Gertrude watching a play. So audience is not only watching Hamlet as a play, but also a play within a play called the murder of Gonzago, the dumb show. So there is a play within a play that is visible by the audience. So this type of play is self-reflexive. It is improvisational. It makes objective comment on the validity of the theatrical act. So why are we here? We must justify ourselves. In waiting for Godot, two tramps are there standing on the stage. The question before is, 
before them is that why are they there? So according to Samuel Beckett, Samuel Beckett tried to define the play. He said that I place these two trumps, tramps on the stage. They are there on the stage and they must justify why they are there. So if you see that human beings are human beings, they are placed on this earth and we through our action try to justify why we are here. All the world is a stage, Shakespeare wrote, all the world is a stage, men and women merely players. So the stage is always a metaphor of the world. So A is like B, the world is like theatre, theatre is like world. Antonin Artu calls about this doubling of theatre in his famous work Theatre and its Double. Antonin Artu says, life doubles theatre, theatre doubles life. And when we have a representation of that, representation of theatre in full view of the audience, it becomes meta theatre. Okay, if you are shown how the life is doubled, how the life is imitated on the stage, the theatre becomes meta theatrical. Meta theatrical is a form, a device that looks at theatre not as a natural representation, but rather as an artificial representation, as an artifice, man made artifice. It also looks at theatre as more problematic with reference to space and time. Okay, we know that space and time very important for our life. Chronology is always very important as well as the space. So the spatio-temporal dimension is very important. In case of theatre, the space and time is multifaceted, multi-fold, multi-layered. So there are different faces of time and space in case of drama. For example, I give reference to Hamlet. Hamlet is based on a historical narrative, history of Denmark, 11th century history of Denmark. Shakespeare is writing that in 1601. Okay, so that is early 17th century England and performing the play on that stage. If I perform the play Hamlet as Hyder on contemporary Indian stage, so the play will have contained at least three times. Number one, the historical time of Denmark. Number two, the historical time of the play's composition. Number three, the historical time of the place actual performance. So there are three types of times all brought together in a single temporal segment in a theatre. Similarly, as far as space is concerned, think of the three spaces. So if I produce Hamlet as Hyder, Hyder is a cinema I know produced by Vishal Bhardwaraj. If I think of this cinema as a play, so Haider is a character who is standing in a space called Kashmir. Okay, this Haider is based on Shakespeare's Hamlet. Shakespeare's Hamlet is performing on the Elizabethan and Jacobean stage, 17th century, early 17th century space within England, either Globe Theatre, Rose Theatre, Fortune Theatre or the Court Theatre. This Hamlet is performing and Hamlet is located in a space called Denmark. Denmark of 11th century, so another space. So when this play is performed in Kashmir, we have under that space the image of London, under that space the image of Denmark. So three spaces are brought together. So the topicality, topicality, contemporaneity and historicity of the play are all brought together. By historicity I talk about the historical subject matter. By topicality, I refer to the contemporary topics that was that are there when the play is being performed. Okay, and the performative situation of the play will mark this difference. In case of inset improvisational play, what happens is that play is performed now. Okay, play is performed now, and it talks about the presentness of the text. Although this presentness of the text involves the stories of the past, yet this presentness of the text makes theatre always our contemporary. And that is the basic difference between 
drama and other forms of literature because drama makes the story visible in terms of the present okay drama makes the story visible in terms of the present in 1968 if someone is writing a historical narrative say a story based on the history of india tughlaq is a play written say girish kannar's tughlaq for example so tughlaq is situated in 14th century okay 13th 14th century it is historically rec recorded that is the historicity of the text when girish kannar is composing this play in the late 60s he is thinking about the contemporary social situation of india at that time and then thinking of this tughlaq vis-a-vis say pandit jawaharlal nehru the first prime minister of india so the history of tughlaq is combined with the history of the the glorious rule of the first prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru and then he is performing the play in the context of 1968 keeping in mind the contextual situation so when the audience is seeing tughlaq on the stage the audience is reminded of of the tughlaqic actions tughlaq like action of pandit jawaharlal nehru so historicity of the text is blended with topicality of the text with reference to the space and time so that tughlaq's delhi becomes new delhi post independence even the time is multiple when the same play tughlaq is now performed in the context of 2020 in the context of 2020 if the play is performed so we have the historical context of 14th century the compositional context of 1968 and then we have the contemporary context the topicality of 2020 in the text so this text becomes multi layered meta theater attempts to resolve this by bringing the present and the future together on the stage making it look as if everything is being performed by actors who are located in the present trying to present stories that are brought either from history or from contemporary society in silence the curtain is in session what happens a group of performers who are traveling from mumbai bombay to a suburban place in order to perform a play a play that is to be performed is based on president johnson of united states of america so he is related to nuclear disarmament nuclear bomb manufacturer of nuclear bomb so a trial will be taking place in the evening play on president johnson on nuclear bomb atomic bomb and disarmament so this is the political play that is to be performed in the evening so group of player has come and when they arrive at this theater house they take charge of this theater house they find it empty the audience will be coming in the evening they have a lot of time to spend say 3 hours time is left they find one player missing and because the player is missing what do they do because the player is missing what they do they simply want to replace that actor with someone else and in order to replace that actor with someone else they have to prepare an actor so we have an actor preparing for the role for the evening play that actor is a naive actor of the village who doesn't know anything about theater so that person has to be taught what theater is so in order to teach that person samant a villager the players come together to rehearse the mock trial scene they start rehearsing on the mock trial scene and instead of taking the evening play they plan to take their own concocted stories invented stories and then they place lila banare as an accused so it is a game played by people in full view of the audience everything is shown as if it is a playful rehearsal improvisation that is going on with an objective of teaching this 
villager summon the act of performance the art of performance or about the proceedings of the court the court is in session so the court is in session can be regarded as a play that has a larger frame and within that frame there are inset stories so what is the largest frame of the story the story that i just told you of a group of players coming to perform a play but because the player is missing they take a villager start instructing the player the actor by rehearsing on some mock trial scenes and by the end of time the audience start peeping in and they prepare for the final play the play ends this is the broader framework of silence the court is in session inside this story what we have the story we have the story of summon a villager who wants to know learn the act of art of acting performance so he is learning this art from number 1 lila banare and number 2 from other players so this story is there within this story we have the entrapment of lila banare who is turned into a convict first it starts with an imaginative accusation against lila banare then that imaginative accusation turns into a real accusation against lila banare and through this we have gradual building up of stories within that story we again have the story of lila banare the personal histories that are brought inside so in that personal history we have the narrative of the past narrative of the near present near past the narratives of the present all brought together the line between illusion and reality gradually blurs breaks snaps and what we have is a kind of story within a story within a story and inside the core of the story is the plight of lila banare she has conceived a baby out of an illegitimate relationship with professor damle and that is the story that lies at the core of the story the entire court session is a mock court session actually these players have come to perform a mock trial session of president johnson in the evening but now also they have performed a kind of mock trial session in order to rehearse the performance that is waiting in the evening but take up an another story so the story of president johnson is just at the backdrop that is a play that is not performed rather what is performed is how the players spend their time of 3 hours instructing this villager summon the act of the art of performance training him in the legal procedures court procedures so the session that is going on the court session that is going on is not at all a court session that is a mockery of court session it's an illusory court session neither for drama the evening play that is based on the trial of dr of president johnson is a drama having a trial session where the script is written but in this rehearsal time whatever happens on the stage appears to be nothing appears to be just a rehearsal but this rehearsal gradually entraps lila banare exposes her secret and forces her to confess and while these players other players are all engaged in forcing lila banare out of himself out of herself while other characters are forcing lila banare to come out of herself what happens the characters also reveal themselves you remember the interrogation scene of stanley weber in the birthday party where mackan and goldberg they keep on asking questions these questions are almost absurd questions which came first the egg or the chicken who crossed the road so why did you kill your wife when stanley says that i did not get married then they accuse him why did you kill your wife so if a person states that he has not married he has no wife the second question is why did you kill your wife 
such type of absurd questions are given and what happens there is a psychological breakdown of stanley and through the psychological breakdown of stanley stanley is taken out of himself out of his safe refuge in this resort of meg and pete similarly here we have the entrapment of lila banare and the entire entrapment is done through the physical means of theater physical means of theater refer to the machinery of theater that is used so stage props characters enactment okay all these are part of stage props in this meta meta theatrical play in the context of 67 and 68 i regard this as innovative because this play can be regarded as a play of messianic revolt a play of existential revolt a play of social revolt all together within a single play this play can be called a naturalistic play a realistic play this play can also be called surrealistic play because an amount of dream element is there in the play we often find this lila banare transported to her childhood singing the songs of childhood of nursery school she is often she is often seen instructing the small children of the school she is often transported to that subconscious state absent minded state so there is the entire interplay of the psychological surreal dream like element in the play and furthermore this is also a naturalistic psychological play where we have an intense psychodrama going on according to bernard shaw no conflict no drama so conflict is generated in the play and this conflict is generated through through the dramatization of the ironies the discrepancy between appearance and reality whatever appears does not stand to be real and whatever appears to be real turns out to be turns out to be false okay thank you very much if yes, you have any sir. question you can ask me afterwards say so so may i ask a question thank you very much Hello. for your attendance audience so sir may i ask one question yes